This is your tech news briefing for Friday, January 20th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. One of the biggest leaps in lightning protection technology since Ben Franklin came up with the lightning rod was announced this week. For the first time, an international group of researchers demonstrated that it was possible to use lasers to guide the path of lightning. These findings could help open new ways for protecting people, landscapes, and businesses from lightning damage and destruction. Joining us to discuss this experiment is our science reporter, Eileen Woodward. Hi, Eileen. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. So just before we get into how this technology works, can you give us a sense of just how damaging lightning strikes can be? Absolutely. So while the statistics vary somewhat, lightning can cause thousands of casualties per year. And it also can be damaging to buildings and infrastructure, airports, and it can also actually delay rocket launches. Places like NASA have very strict launch weather criteria in place where if a strike happens within a certain amount of time and a certain amount of distance of a rocket launch, it it can delay that launch. Okay, so let's talk a bit about this experiment. Lasers were used to guide the pathway of lightning. Can you talk to us a little bit about how that worked? I mean, I assume these weren't just like regular laser pointers. So the laser that was used in this particular study was built specifically for this experimental campaign. It's a prototype laser about the size of a car, and it's a very high-powered laser that's capable of sending out these short, intense pulses along a laser beam. And they assembled this laser at the top of a Swiss peak next to an existing telecommunications tower that was about 124 meters tall. And at the top of that telecommunications tower, there was already a lightning rod existing. And the concept behind sort of laser-guided lightning, as it were, is that this high-powered laser and the short, intense pulses that come out of it, they're capable of heating the air and ionizing the air. The reason for this is that lightning is actually fairly arbitrary process. It's the result of opposing electrical charges and clouds and the ground and everything in between. And the connection of those two is what creates a lightning strike. But the way this laser technology works is that we're artificially creating sort of these preferred pathways that lightning will take instead that we can then guide to where we want, which in this case happened to be a lightning rod. Are there other technologies in use at the moment that can guide where lightning goes? Sure. So The most common lightning protection device is actually the same one that's been around for almost 300 years. It was devised by Benjamin Franklin, and it's called a Franklin rod, appropriately named, and it's an electrically conductive metallic stick uh, that's on the tops of buildings. It's used in, like, city skylines and things, and what it does is it sort of helps provide a path for lightning strikes to safely follow to the ground. The problem with a traditional lightning rod, the researchers explained to me, is that they can only offer limited protection. So if you place a rod that's 10 meters high, it can only protect a radius of 10 meters. And that doesn't really work so well if you want to protect like a rocket launch pad or an airport or other sensitive installations like a power plant. It's great for a house, but it's not great for sort of these sprawling sensitive installations. Okay, so this was the first time this was done successfully outside. What's the next step then for this kind of technology? So in this particular experiment, they did it in the wild. They showed that they were capable of guiding lightning. Previous experiments, they were sort of guiding the electrical equivalent of lightning, but it wasn't lightning. It was in a lab, and it was only over distances of like two meters, for instance. Here, they did it with real lightning for a distance of up to 60 meters, nearly 200 feet. And so the next step now is to make that 200-foot distance even longer. So to be able to guide lightning for hundreds of meters, if not kilometers. One of the researchers would really like to take this laser and bring it down to sort of sea level, so off the mountaintop, and test it near an airport, sort of in a situation in which they hope that it'll one day be applicable for. And in order to really achieve these next step results, they think they need a higher energy laser, which might necessitate 
a bigger laser. But either way, they mentioned that, you know, the commercial applications for this is at least a decade out, if not more. So then how significant was this test overall if the possible uses are at least 10 years away? The way both the study authors and other physicists who were not involved in the research explained it to me is that it's really a proof of concept. One of them likened it to the recent results out of a U.S. lab regarding nuclear fusion, where they sort of showed that it was possible to get more energy out than you put into a nuclear fusion experiment. They say the same concept here is that this was something that they had been striving to achieve, laser-guided lightning, since almost the inception of the laser, like 50, 60 years ago. But it had never really been demonstrated as possible until now. So now that it's been demonstrated, a lot of the thought process here is that this space will see a lot more investment. There'll be a lot more research now that they know it can be done. It's just a matter of tweaking the laser to make longer distances possible and then working towards maybe smaller lasers, maybe making it so assembling it isn't quite so difficult and steps like that. All right, that was our science reporter, Island Woodward. Island, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Zoe. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. For more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.